Well, I'm waiting for a question. <laughs> you know, I got nothing to say <laughs> for my defense. Last year was already great, right? But this year, uh, the, the amount of, of uh, uh, new launches, yeah, I think, is, is stag staggering. I didn't count them. Yeah. What sticks in my mind uh, are two things. Uh, there's all the AI and machine learning uh, services, and I guess we'll get back to that. And that's the, the shiny new things, right? So it's, it's exciting. But there's also um, some very fundamental um, uh, services, for example, uh, Aurora, right? It's Aurora Serverless. Um, that's, that's fantastic. The ability for customers to use a super scalable database without even starting clusters or instances, just on demand, completely on demand, just like Lambda. Uh, global tables for DynamoDB. That sounds like, yeah, okay, nice, but so what? Well, the thing is, I mean, this is the kind of problem that um, the IT industry and the database companies have been trying to solve for decades. Yeah. Having globally distributed data with multi-master rights, you know, I call it the holy grail of distributed systems. And of course, the, all, the, all the container stuff, uh, EKS, uh, so you know Kubernetes on AWS. It's a big deal. I don't know if you caught that number that Andy mentioned. The fact that uh, according to a CNCF study, 63% of Kubernetes cloud workloads run on AWS. Might be a surprise to some, right? Uh, Fargate, uh, fully managed containers. Again, you know, just no instance, uh, no instances, no infrastructure at all. Just fire up your containers. So extending that serverless architecture model, you get to do in just literally minutes what would probably take weeks before you could even get started. Right? Um, so I think this is, um, this is really, really great. Um, we're quite proud to, uh, to deliver all those new capabilities to customers. Um, on, on, I would say on the core infrastructure, you know, compute, storage, databases, we keep innovating. Now you can do serverless compute, uh, you can do, well, serverless storage, I guess, S3 has been there for a while. You can do uh, serverless databases, uh, you can do serverless containers, just, you know, just like that. Our obsession is to simplify things, right? Um, and, um, and these are really concrete examples of doing that. Just you need storage, you need compute, you need databases, you need containers, but there's, we, don't, you know, we don't think there's any real value in customers building that stuff from scratch, and customers are asking us to actually free them from doing that. And, and uh, serverless, you know, we went from managed services to full serverless uh, propositions, and this just goes um, to show that you know, that's exactly what customers want. You know, as you know, we start from what customers want. That's, there is no AWS vision. There is just AWS customers and we listen to them and we have you know, millions of customers, so that's a whole lot of people to listen to. We don't build technology because it's cool. You know, we just build what you need, right? And if, if you needed one sentence to summarize what AWS is all about, that's it, right? We should have this on a t-shirt. <laughs> uh, no, seriously, it's, it's exactly what we stand for. It's what we do every day. S SageMaker, um, I think it will take a while for people to realize the full extent of that service. And you could look at it and say, so what? Okay, oh, notebooks. Okay, we could do notebooks, right, before. Sure, we did, I did, everyone did. Uh, we could train models before, we could deploy models before. So what's the big deal? Well, the big deal is it's all in one place. Uh, you can use one module in there, just a notebook module or the training module or the deployment module uh, independently, or you can combine them together and have that end-to-end -end solution where you go from notebook to training to building the model to hosting the model to doing A-B testing on the model, etc., etc. Because you can, with the same set of tools, you go from experimentation to uh, web scale production, really. Right, and, um, and that's great. And when it comes to the skills required to do this, well, you could be beginning with machine learning. You could take uh, off-the-shelf algorithms, 
right? And say, okay, I want to solve a classification problem or I want to solve a uh, clustering problem. Okay, so hmm, I can pick the right algorithm in there. We, we provide them for you and we'll keep adding more. Um, and you would just throw your data at this. The only code you would need to write is actually to uh, clean your data and, and, and run the data through that algo and job done. And at the other end of the spectrum, if you're an ultimate expert on machine learning and deep learning and you wanted to code everything yourself, you could definitely do that. You have the flexibility. If you have your own training libraries, if you have your own uh, prediction libraries, etc., etc., you can just put all, everything together in the Docker container, push that on SageMaker, and enjoy the, the scalability and the deployment that, um, that SageMaker brings. So it's, I'm very, very excited uh, with, with this product. The ability to use deep learning, um, well, I think it's, um, it's core. Uh, it's core to, uh, to the product development process, if you ask me. Um, because deep learning is all about um, extracting features from your data. And your data could be, uh, it could be even enterprise data, right? Um, uh, it could be you know, customer data, sales data, how your customers use your product, uh, what they like, what they don't like, etc. So you may have multiple sources of data. It could, could come in all shapes and sizes. And um, it might be difficult to, to actually extract it using, using traditional machine learning techniques, right? So deep learning is great at finding features in complex, unstructured data. So it could be images and movies and sound, but it could be enterprise data too, okay? If you ask, uh, you know, uh, a CEO or, or uh, you know, an exec, um, how important is it for you to improve your product? Well, I don't think any one of them is going to say, well, not so much, right? <laughs> right? It's, it's key, okay? So now, once they understand that deep learning is going to help them do that, right, through you know, extracting features and understanding automatically what your data looks like, then this becomes central, right? And uh, a lot of people focus on AI as, you know, chatbots and, I mean, the visible tip of the iceberg, but I think what, it, what is actually going to change everything is the hidden part of the iceberg, which is applying deep learning to enterprise data and, and just ex realizing that, you know, you have been sitting on a wealth of information for years and not really using it. So I think AI in general is, is central to, to pretty much every company, right? So it's important for us to provide customers with tools that work whatever their skill level is. If they're experts, fine. They can go low level and, 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 and do that. Uh, and they've been able to do that for a while now. But if they're, if they're not experts, right, uh, then they need, they need help and SageMaker is helping them. And then, of course, the high-level services uh, like you know, translate and comprehend and transcribe and, and recognition, etc., which are uh, re really use case centric, they can help them as well. You know, super easy to use. Before you even go into training and deep learning, etc., you need to have the foundation infrastructure to do that, right? And again, Andy mentioned it. It said he closed his uh, machine learning uh, part with this, very pragmatic as always. And again, I fully agree with that. He said, well, machine learning is nice, but if, if you don't have a foundation, then it's smoke and mirrors pretty much, right? Not his words, mine, but um, that's, that's what he said. And, um, and w using S3 uh, for your data lake, uh, using you know, maybe Aurora and DynamoDB and others to store the data right, as backends that you can specialize for a given use case, et cetera. Uh, yes, we announced very shiny and, and exciting, uh, and I, I say shiny in a nice way because I think they're going to shine. Um, uh, those shiny and, 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 and exciting AI services, but if we didn't have those found that, that foundation layer that we had for over 10 years now, it would be meaningless. Uh, you have to do your homework, right? You have to do the homework and then you can have fun. So yeah. doing the homework means collecting the data, organizing the data, securing the data, encrypting, blah, 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 blah. And then, okay, once it's there, then you can pull it into AI, ML, etc., and, and, and work on the, on the sexier stuff. But 
the lower level is at least as important to me. Um, so if the, if the question that you're asking me is, do we have 50 guys in a bunker somewhere working on this? That is the question. Who knows, right? Uh, seriously, I would be the last to know. Um, so that's all I can say, right? Um, m my gut feeling is um, we spend a lot of resources on the hardware innovation. We, we know how to do a hardware innovation. So I'll, that's where I'll stay on that one. We'll see. Um, it, yeah, we'll see what happens there. Um, the, the last thing I want to say is I'm not meeting any customer today who tells me this is a big thing for them. So, again, trends are trends, buzzwords are buzzwords, long-term things are long-term things, but um, we focus on the customers and they're more interested in you know, managing their data, uh, being able to do machine learning and AI at scale with very little fuss. Um, that's what I hear and that's what I help them with. And you know, if it, it comes a time when com 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 uh, quantum computing becomes a thing for our customers, then we'll be there for them, as always. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>